we'll do a 10, 15 minute or so clinic here and drive a We're going to do chipping clinic, just a little 10 15 minutes chipping. You're all going to get a shot of that as well. But then we do flop shot and some bunker play as well. When we get into this <coughs> position, so I'm only one, sort of, let's say one and a half, two yards off the green. I can't putt this because it's too hairy, or well, let's imagine it's too hairy. So I have to get the ball past that, then let it go. Now, the first thing I do is look for, I assess the lie first. So the lie for me is going to dictate the landing area. Okay, so a lot of people come up and go, I just want to make sure I land the ball there. But if the ball's lying well, I could carry it a little bit further, so it's going to change trajectory. So the first thing I look at is the lie. We're going to have a perfect lie on every shot here today, which is handy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> then from there, I'm looking at the landing area, and I really want the ball to run as soon as possible. There's no need from here to play this ball up into the air, because when it lands, I don't know what it's going to do. I don't know if it's going to kick right, kick left, what it's going to do, so it's very unpredictable. If I get that shot wrong, what's going to happen? <laughs> The, the shed's going to get it. <laughs> Something's going to get it. Eh? <laughs> so that length of swing for that size of shot is not, not <clears> achievable. <throat> so we need to get the ball running as soon as possible. Once I've got the ball running, or I'm going to get it running, I can assess the line. So then I can see that now it's going to start to turn left, so I've got a head start already. So the idea is to try and get the ball running as soon as possible, knowing the line is right, right to left. I can get it to run, then I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to set myself up in a position my hands are ahead, when I come down I'm going to hit golf ball, golf ball's away then leading edge is going to strike the ground, you can see my hands are ahead and the loft's taken off the golf club because of that, and then through the shot, so ball then turf strike with leading edge is going to keep the loft off, get the ball nice and low, get it running towards target. So I, I use 54 from pretty much anywhere, uh, Mark Amira was similar, Mark Amira had one wedge, he had a 56 degree wedge, he played that from everywhere, he thought it was too confusing putting different clubs in the bag, so he just used the one, manipulated the loft as he went. I use 54 from everywhere, unless I'm playing the flop or bunker shot, but pretty much any shot, if I was hitting towards buggy, hitting halfway up there, I would hit 54. Mm. I can keep the loft off the 54 as long as I use the leading edge, so my hands are ahead, I can keep the loft off so the ball's landed and ran out, but I've got a lot of loft in the club, but I've manipulated the loft. Hands are ahead, so I've taken the loft off. <coughs> Pushing hands ahead, I take the loft off, and then the club sits more on its leading edge. I've exaggerated that, obviously. And my weight is 70% left. Okay, weight stays left for the whole motion. Okay, that's going to encourage a steeper angle of attack, so the club comes down, my hands are going to stay ahead, and then from there, I'm going to turn my body through towards target. Now, there's a little bit of pivot, so body turns through, pick the club up, turn the body through, to get the ball to target. Now, a lot of people don't, a lot of people just pull with the hands and arms. Yeah, good line. <laughs> <laughs> Pull with the hands and arms because it's such a short shot, but the body still has to turn. So I'm there, turning the body through, and the ball's running out. You can see it trying to check a little bit as well because the angle of attack's coming down. So ball behind, club behind ball, ball centre, weights left, hands are ahead. Pick the club up, then from there, turning body back through, keeping the weight left. Play a little shot from there. Um, what wedges have you got? That's nice. <laughs> That's nice. Yeah. That's alright. Let's go get a Cali wedge, shall we? <laughs> <laughs> Good. So we've got ball centre of stance, excellent. Hands are slightly ahead, which is good. So they favour the left thigh. Where's your weight? Oh, my left. On no, your most, left. Mostly on so my left. It's 70 on the yep. left. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good. So let's just play a couple of shots in there. See how you got on. So your setup position is excellent. You need to get that ball running as soon as possible. That ball. <laughs> Alright. Good. So good. So we did a little clinic earlier on, and you've got a good grasp of that. Mm -hmm. um, ideally, we would get the ball running a little bit earlier. Club length of strokes really good. When you come through though, when you follow through to here in your finished position, your leading edge is at 45 degrees. So there's quite a bit of loft on the shot there. Yep. So when you play that, the ball's it's fine, but it's carrying a little bit higher and too far for the shot we're trying to play. Yep. So we talked about trying to get that leading edge to be vertical, so it's Roll over, fully yeah. rolled over, yeah. And as we're coming down, the face is closing a little bit more, and a closing face is de-lofting at the same time. So when we do that and finish in that position, instead of that position, we take the loft off. So the ball runs earlier and a lot lower. Yeah. 
and you can see the finished position I'm in there. Yep. So there's a little roll of the wrists through impact there to get that, but you can see how that drops the trajectory. Mm -hmm. We'll give that a bash. Brilliant. Great. Well, you've got the potter. Well, well, it does come out hotter, right. yeah, so it's ran off the back of the green because you landed at the same distance, but you can see how the trajectory was down. Yeah. Well done. Brilliant. Superb. Well done. I would stop there. Yeah, that's, good. <laughs> okay. that's, good. that's a good one. So now we've obviously got an obstacle to go over. So if I played that shot now, what's going to happen? If I use leading edge, we're going to hit obstacle. Okay, so now I have no option here but to get the ball in there. We have to get the ball airborne. This for me is a last resort. So I need to get the ball up into air, so I need to get more loft. We want to use the back of the club this time. So instead of using leading edge, we need to try and use the bounce of the back of the club. So when I take my address position, my shaft is no longer leaning forward, it's now vertical. Okay, So that's bringing the back of the club more into play. I also want to open the face to add a little bit more loft, which again is bringing the back of the club into play. So if I put loads of loft on, you can see it's purely sitting on the back of the club. Then if I lower my hands, it's going to bring the back of the club even more into play. So by opening the face and lowering my hands, I'm then in a position that I can use the back of the golf club to strike the ground. Now that's going to strike the ground before I hit the golf ball. So I'm actually going to chunk it a little bit. Okay, when Mickelson plays his shot off the cart path, he is actually striking the ground just before the golf ball. Coming in, striking the ground before golf ball. Leading edge of the club goes below the equator of the ball. Ball runs up the face and away, and this skids along the ground, back of the club. Okay, so we're trying to get the back of the club to make contact with the ground. That's key. Okay, so we're taking away the fact that we've, you know, I've got to get this ball up in the air. Okay, we're taking all that out of the game. We're just trying to get the back of the club to strike the ground. So back of the club strikes the ground, which is going to get the ball up in there. Dress position, a little bit wider stance because my swing is going to be longer than, with, than what we did with the chip shot. Club in line with target, I then open the face and lower the hands. So now the back of the club striking sitting on the ground. So my hands are low. Okay. Then from there, weight still left, same as before. I'm going to cock the club up. So I'm not here, I've got a lot of wrist cock. And again, turning the body through. So I'm there, turning body through just like we did before, but this time the grooves point back to me. Okay, that's holding the loft on. If I can get the grooves to point back to me, I've got the loft on. Okay, so they're pointing back towards me. Now I hit that quite heavy there, that wasn't a great strike, but I got away with it because my setup position was so good. I put the club in a position where the face was open, hands were low, back, through. So your margin for error is actually okay because the club's lower to the ground for longer so there's a line of compression that's been sustained but we've set the club up correctly for that to happen. In this shot my weight stays left so I'm more over the top of the golf ball. Still left, I'm still left there. Coming back down, I'm on top of the golf ball at impact. The club, the back of the club, strikes the ground. Grooves point back towards me to be able to play that shot. Brilliant, you're good. I mean, your, your technique's excellent. So good weight left there, excellent. Caught the wrist up, nice and short. There you go. Good, and leaving groove pointing back towards you. Excellent. So we need to get a little bit softer strike on that one because yeah. it came out a little bit hot and over and bit fluffy yeah. rough. So if we add a little bit more loft to the club, yeah. so if we add the loft and then place the hands on, mm -hmm. then play the shot. So now it looks as though the club's pointing quite a long way to the right. But you're okay with that. You're good because yeah. your setup position's good, your weight's good, length of swing's going to be good. There you go. Nice and soft. Very good. Wasn't, I, I felt as if I didn't make great contact there, but oh. obviously it kind of left me. There's plenty of margin for error because you're trying to keep it nice and shallow all exactly. the way along. That's right. And, and making the back edge of the club being the point of contact, for that being yeah. the focus. That's, that's a really weird sensation that for is, me because I was saying to you, I never really kind of understood how to use bounce properly and yep. stuff like that. No, that's that's it. But certainly setting yourself up to encourage it. Yeah. It's brilliant. So that, that club's lower to the ground for longer, so your margin for error is better. So your strike there wasn't great, but come. Yeah, brilliant. we'll take that. Good. Yeah, absolutely. Done. Strike feel a bit better than that one? Yeah, yep. that felt better. Very good. The focus was club striking ground, not club striking ball. Yep. Brilliant, well done. Right lads, bunker play. All good at bunker play? No, no. no. It's quite similar to the shot we've just played. So the, the flop shot we've played is very similar to that. Um, two differences with a golf shot from a bunker, or, or a bunker shot from any other golf shot, is the fact that we don't hit the golf ball. So we don't actually hit the golf ball, so we, we hit the sand, which forces the ball out. The other thing I was thinking of was the club head passes the ball. 
So we don't hit the ball and the club head passes the ball, mm -hmm. whereas a normal shot balls away. Okay, so that takes a lot of speed in order to be able to do that. So we need to get the club to pass the golf ball. Um, so I take my address position. My ball position is just inside left heel. So it's quite far forward, quite a wide stance. I dig my feet in. Any idea why I dig my feet in? So you don't slip. So don't slip. Yep, then nails. It gets you, you slightly lower down, so you're more liable to get underneath the ball. Brilliant, absolutely. So yeah. and if I dug into my knees, <laughs> and I'm going to hit the ground there. Right? So the more I dig in, the more chance I've got of catching sand before the golf ball. So that's, that's a handy thing to do, obviously for stability as well, of course. So I, I and then I've, from this position, I've dug myself in. My feet are a little bit left, not massively left of where I'm going, but a little bit left. My, I'll ground the club just now. I open the face and lower the hands, just like flop shot. Then take my grip. If I was to open the face and lower hands and then address the ball, my hands would be in too strong a position. So I set the club up first, take my grip, and then I'm ready to go. Good. Now, where do you think the weight stays, left or right? Left, excellent. What happens if this weight stays right? Do that, try to help it up. Right? It's all very similar to what we're doing before. But I now need to make sure that I'm again snappy, quick, a lot of club head speed. I don't, I'm not hitting the ball far here, it's quite a short shot, so I'm only going that far. It's not a long bunker shot, but my speed was up there. Length of swing was short, so back swing was short, just to here. Follow through was quite short, and the grooves back towards me, and the follow through dictates the length of the shot I'm playing. So my follow through short, pointing back to me because I'm just playing a short bunker shot. To get more distance, what do I do? Follow through further. Okay, so same thing, same length of back swing, weight still left. Follow through, my hands finished up here, and the reason. I wasn't trying to apply any more force, but if, my hand, if I'm concentrating and getting my hands to finish up here, then I must be faster and more aggressive through impact for that to happen. So I just think about where my hands finish to get different trajectory and distance. It's really a case of focusing on point of entry. Darling, you don't mention that. Perfect. Ball position's left, weight's left, and I'm good to go. I'm very set up, very much like my flop shot. Weight stays left. Club comes back, good wrist cock as well. I don't just purely pull it back, a lot of wrist cock, that adds loft. That's no loft, that's loft. So by cocking the wrist, there's lots of loft. Then from there, I'm really concentrating on my point of entry. Weight's left, I'm coming down, 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 hitting the point of entry, continuing down through. Groove point back to me. Okay. This is your point of entry. Yeah. Okay. okay. So that's in line with your left heel. If that was to continue, it'd just be inside left heel. Good. Okay. Weight's left. Mm -hmm. So we open the face a little bit. Good, then grip it, yep, excellent. Good, so weight's left, it stays left. Back swing's nice and short. Down through point of entry. Done, excellent. Very good, so you can see there, so your ball was here. Yep. Point of entry was here. Here's your divot past your point of entry. You hit the ball down, got away, perfect. There was no divot behind the golf no. ball. Right. Again, you can get that feedback. Just by looking at the sand, you can get the feedback. There's yep. where the divot was. There's where the point of entry was. Very good. Well done. Weight stays left. Short back swing. Can concentrate on point of entry. Down and through that. Keep your weight left. Done. Brilliant. Good. So there was line there. Yep. Okay. Divot started in here somewhere. So you've gone behind the line. Yep. But you can see the largest part of your divot. So 70% of the divot is post impact or yep. post line because your ball is here. So that's excellent. Again. So again, the idea, cut a little bit behind, but most of the divot is this side. Yeah. Over there. Well done. Well done. I have into the wind tee shot of this would be slightly lower on the tee and then feel as if I'm just kind of staying in the shot. Well, a lot of people. See if you're yeah, out of the shot, obviously, you're going to miss it right, but 